This is Autofocus, the Philippines' premier motor show. Here are our features on this episode of Electronic Magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with the reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, an electric sedan from Hyundai, the Ioniq 6, and a compact SUV from Maxxis, the D60 Pro. On Autopedia, we'll talk about checking an engine light. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the all-new Mitsubishi Triton launch as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we're right back after this short break. Limits where the all new Mitsubishi Triton drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Hyundai. More full battery electric vehicles are now available locally, they cost a pretty penny. But for those who want to fast-track themselves into the future of mobility with full electrics, more options are available at a number of local dealerships. This car we checks out one option, the Hyundai Ioniq 6. Hyundai has risen to become one of the global leaders in the production of electric vehicles. From the Ioniq 5 and Ioniq 6, both earning EV Car of the Year and Design Awards from international auto publications and design institutions. Hyundai Motor Philippines first brought in the Ioniq 5, then the Ioniq 6. While the Ioniq 5 is an SUV crossover, the Ioniq 6 is properly a four-door saloon, 4,855mm long, 1,880mm wide, and 1,495mm tall with a 2,950mm long wheelbase. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 is one of the best-looking EVs around certainly deserving the top honors garnered at the 2023 Good Design Awards in the US of A. Sleek, streamlined, aerodynamic, the Ioniq 6 exudes a classic sports car vibe especially with a sloped rear end. But there's nothing retro about the Ioniq 6. It's all modern and millennial with a look that won't age. It also comes with a lot of the modern exterior features of the latest vehicle models. The parametric pixel LED headlamps and high-mounted stop lamp on the spoiler are especially distinctive. And that's not all form, but also cutting-edge functionality. The projection headlamps come with what Hyundai calls an intelligent front lighting system that can detect approaching vehicles and prevent blinding oncoming drivers or drivers up ahead with high beam lights. There's also auto light control. Flush color keyed outside door handles add to the sleek aerodynamic look. The outside door mirrors are heated, power, fold, and adjust, and come with integrated trim lights. The 20-inch alloy wheels also look sharp. The Ionic 6 interior can also be described as award-winning with a lot of unique design features as well as advanced tech and lighting systems that make owning one a rich, rewarding, and comfortable experience. You've got smart keyless entry and push-button start as a standard feature. Unique are the four-dot interactive pixel LED lights on the steering wheel and the LED lights on the crash pad. Then there's the bridge type center console with the cup holders. Hyundai kept the door armrest button free, transferring the controls for the door locks and power windows to the center console. A cool and very techy feature is speed sync lighting system that automatically controls front cabin lighting depending on how fast the Ionic 6 is going from 10% brightness at 30 km per hour to 100% at 100 km per hour. Hyundai describes the Ionic 6 as cocoon-like and it's quite roomy, greatly helped along by the flat floor. Leather covers the premium relaxation seats up front and in the rear seats that split and fold back 60-40. The driver's seat power adjusts and come with memory function, is heated and ventilated, and feature lumbar support. The same goes for the front passenger seat except for the memory function. 
The 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster and the 12.3-inch infotainment system are integrated into a single screen, offering a wider view and very convenient access to essential information. The infotainment system features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth with voice recognition, a Bose speaker system with tweeters. There is a wireless charger as well as USB ports for mobile phones and other devices. Other standard convenience features include smart keyless and push-button start, power windows, central door locking, dual-zone automatic air conditioning, center armrest with cup holders, mood lamp, console box, luggage lamps, and auto window defogger. Then we have the powertrain that is used fossil fuel and features a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor, a liquid-cooled 77.4 kWh lithium-ion battery, and a single-speed reduction gear transmission type that drives the real wheels. The powertrain generates 229 PS and 350 Nm of torque, which should give those who enjoy head-snapping acceleration reason to smile. Makes for confident passing on the highways too. A low center of gravity helps make the Ionic 6 feel like a sports car when taking curves at speed. Those with range anxiety should be reassured by Hyundai, touting that the Ionic 6 offered locally can go as far as 545 kilometers on a single charge. One Ionic capability should delight gearheads who like to play with drive modes. This is the EV performance tune-up mode that allows driver to adjust motor power, acceleration sensitivity, steering effort, and drive lane mode to suit his or her driving style. Another feature that should delight or perhaps infuriate is the Electric Active Sound Design or EASD function which allows drivers to choose the kind and volume of virtual sounds the electric powertrain makes. The Ionic 6 rides in a suspension system featuring front McPherson struts and rear multi-link combo. Brakes these 17-inch discs on all four wheels. By the way, the Ionic 6 comes with an electronic parking brake with auto hold. The auto hold is helpful in stop and go traffic in congested city streets. The steering column manually tilts and telescopes. Even those with T Rex arms should not find it difficult to find their preferred driving posture. The steering wheel also features controls for the audio and other functions. The Ionic 6 made available locally comes with the Hyundai Smart Sense technology, a suite of advanced driver assist and safety technology. These include lane keeping assist forward collisions avoidance assist, blind spot collision warning, driver attention warning, lane following assist, high beam assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance, and blind spot view monitor. Helping with parking or just maneuvering in tight spots are the surround view monitor, parking distance warning, and reverse parking collision avoidance assist. Smart cruise control with stop and go function is great both on the highways with strict speed limit or in stop and go traffic. The Ionic 6 also features loads of standard and not-so-standard safety features that include SRS, side and curtain airbags, child restraint system anchors, child lock, anti-lock brake system, multi-collision brake, electronic stability control, hill start assist, tire pressure monitoring system, and manual speed limit. Finally, the Ionic 6 already features a vehicle-to-load or V2L technology that allows one to plug in electrical devices and appliances into power outlets located inside and outside the vehicle. If you're into sporty looking sedans or saloons and are looking to shift to full electrics, the Hyundai Ioniq 6 may be just what you are looking for. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Limits where the all new Mitsubishi Triton drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. I'm a revolution. Suzu D-Mac. I'm a revolution. Into new heights.
Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. BYD has opened its flagship dealer in the country at Bonifacio Global City in Taguig. This is the third dealership in the country for BYD, China's leading manufacturer of BEVs. We're very excited about the opening of uh, BYD in BGC. This is the third outlet that we are opening. But of course, BYD BGC would not be the last. You know, there are uh, eight other uh, facilities we are constructing. And next week, we are uh, about to announce four new locations on our way to having 20 outlets, as I mentioned earlier. You know, we plan to have 20 BYD dealerships within the Philippines within 2024. BYD's flagship dealer located at 9382 20th Street in BGC features a 620 square meter showroom with a dedicated customer lounge and can showcase at least 12 vehicles. We have an 800 square meter showroom. That's the biggest showroom right now for BYD. It can display more than the four models that we have, but of course our intention is to bring in more models and that's why we have planned a big showroom. The service facility, if you will see, is not as big as a typical dealership because there's no after-sales requirement. No, you don't have maintenance. And the cost of maintaining BYD electric vehicle is like 20-25% of your regular cost. And that's why intentionally we've redesigned the dealerships to be bigger in showroom, to accommodate more models that we will be introducing, and right-sizing the workshops you know, to fit the requirements of a BEV, which will be much less than a traditional ICE. The BYD flagship dealership is operated by Harmony New Energy Auto Service, a part of the China Harmony Auto Holding Limited. Harmony is one of our critical partners. No? Harmony is a partner of BYD, not only in the Philippines. They are partners of BYD across Asia in many countries. So it's good to have China's biggest luxury and ultra-luxury automotive group in the Philippines. We are proud that they are part of the BYD family and we're, we're looking forward to collaborating with them as we uplift our auto industry. Isuzu Philippines invited motoring journalists as well as so-called social media influencers on a road trip to the highlands to showcase the advanced features of the 2024 Isuzu Mu X. Today, we are here at the Sagaitai Highlands to test drive the new 2024 Isuzu Muex, showcasing the powerhouse safety and convenience features that is sure to attract the more discerning and tech-savvy buyers of SUV today. And to help us test the new Isuzu Muex, we have invited our friend from the media and influencer group so that they can get the first-hand experience of its new feature here in a controlled driving facility. Isuzu has outfitted the Mu X with the latest in automotive safety and connectivity features that it says make it one of the more technically advanced and safe SUVs in the country. The new Isuzu Mu X now has more advanced safety features with the addition of its new 360 degree around view monitor, or we call it the 360 ABM, which provides a complete view of the surrounding eliminating blind spots and allowing the driver to see any potential hazards in all The first in its class feature, the new Mu X also has a digital video recorder that can record up to 11 hours of footage in its front and rear camera, which also can view simultaneously on its infotainment system. Isuzu looks forward to people visiting its dealerships across the country to check out the new Mu X as well as other vehicles in its lineup. We would like to invite all of the viewers, especially those looking for reliable and safe SUV, to please check out the new 2024 Isuzu Mu-X in any of the Isuzu dealerships near you and discover more about its five-star safety features, new connectivity and technological features that can truly elevate your driving experience. And for those who would like to inquire at the convenience of their home, our website is available 24 hours. Just log on www.isuzofail.com and send us a web inquiry. We will be happy to assist you. Thank you very much.
A new automotive brand is joining the local market. It's called Link & Co. The new brand is represented in the country by United Asia Automotive Group Incorporated, or UAGI, which has 18 years experience in automotive brand guardianship and distribution. Link & Co. is a joint venture between the Volvo Car Group and the Geely Auto Group. According to Fraulein de Tiankin, UAGI Group Managing Director and Link & Co. Philippines brand head, the Link & Co. will offer premium global vehicles that take all the right boxes in terms of design aesthetics, safety, and modern connectivity. During the reveal of Link & Co.'s and UAGI's partnership held at the Ayala Museum, two examples of what the incoming brand will be offering locally were displayed the 01 PHEV crossover and the 06 SUV. Link & Co. Philippines will make its official public debut at the 2024 Manila International Auto Show in April. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We should take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm Johan Tiu from Sonax Philippines. We are at LG2 e. Rodriguez and we will be showcasing our new DIY line, the, what we call the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. So our final Ceramic Series product is called the Ceramic Spray Coating. This is our most powerful DIY Ceramic Spray product. Why? Because this can give you up to four months of ceramic coating protection. So application is very easy. Just spray on the microfiber cloth again and wipe it on the area that you want to put to apply the spray coating. The ceramic spray coating is the highest performing ceramic series product of Sonax. It'll last up to four months. It will give that extra gloss and extra ceramic protection. You can easily just wipe it on your car. See the hydrophobic effect? The water just runs down the car. So that's how easy it is to apply the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. For more information, you can visit our FB page, which is Sonax Page Official, our IG page, which is also Sonax Page Official, and TikTok page, which is also Sonax Page Official. So it's very easy to find us. Thank you. A moment can make all the difference. Next Gen Ford Territory. Own the moment. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. This edition of Head to Head pits the Honda CRV VX Turbo CVT all-wheel drive against the Hyundai Tucson GLS automatic transmission in a spec-to-spec -spec compare. The compact SUV segment has grown into a huge melee of combatants. So it should be fun and informative to seek out a couple of combatants and pit them in a duel and check out their armaments. On one side of this duel is the Honda CRV VX Turbo CVT AWD, the mid price variant of the model in the local lineup, priced at 2.28 million pesos. On the other is the Hyundai Tucson GLS AT, the lower priced of two variants in the local lineup, at 1.57 million pesos. The Honda CRV VX Turbo CVT AWD is 4,691 millimeters long, 1,866 millimeters wide, and 1,691 millimeters tall and with a 2,700mm long wheelbase and a minimum ground clearance of 208mm than its siblings. Hyundai lists the Tucson at 4,630mm long, 1,865mm wide and 1,665mm tall, with a 2,755mm long wheelbase. Honda has equipped the CRV with many of the advanced exterior lighting and features expected in top-grade SUVs full LED headlights with auto on-off function and high beam support system, LED DRLs, sequential front turn lights, LED front fog lights, and side turn signal lights integrated into the door mirrors. 
One can adjust the headlight beam elevation manually on the CRV VX and the V Turbo, while the top of the line RSE HEV features auto leveling function. The VX Turbo and the RSE HEV feature piano black grille, while the VT Turbo is differentiated by its high comb grille with chrome bar. The stately look carries over to the rear with just touches of sport with a tailgate spoiler that features an LED high mount stop lamp and shark fin antenna. The power tailgate comes with a walk-away close function. Other exterior features on the CRV VX Turbo include rear windshield defogger, rain-sensing front wipers with integrated washer nozzle, and intermittent rear wiper with washer and auto wiper on reverse, roof rails, and black painted mudguard. The VX Turbo and the V-Turbo ride on 18-inch silver aluminum alloy wheels wrapped by 235-60R18-103H tires. Quite notable in the Tucson is how the LED daytime running lights seem to be part of the grille, only visible once turned on. The turn indicator lights also get the same ingenious parametric lighting treatment. The multi-face reflector headlamps are framed at the ends of the bumper. They come with auto light function. The rear combination light design uses the same principles as in the front to come up with a distinctive, instantly recognizable look for the new Tucson. Also notable is how Hyundai seemingly incorporated its logo into the rear glass window while ingeniously hiding the wipers under the rear spoiler with high mount stop light. Both the 19-inch alloy rims of the GLS Plus and the 18-inch alloy rims of the GLS also stand out when compared to those on the competition. Honda is known for combining elegance and modernity in cabin design and amenities. The 6th generation CRV manifests this quite effectively in a roomy and comfortable cabin. The CRV VX Turbo as well as the V Turbo is a 7 seater with 3 rows of seats, all upholstered in leather that also wraps the shift knob. The driver gets an 8 way power adjusting seat with memory. The front passenger seat power adjusts 4 ways. The second row seat for three splits and reclines 60-40 and come with one action sliding seat to help with ingress and egress into the third row seat for two that splits and reclines 50-50. The VX Turbo Cabin features wood accents that soften the piano black finish. The RSE HEV features brushed metal accents. The dash is highlighted by the 10.2-inch full digital instrument cluster that provide all the important information a driver needs including speed and time range and fuel, driver attention. Catering to much of the needs of our digital gadget age, the Honda CR-V VX also comes with a 15-watt wireless charger to augment the USB-A and USB-C charging ports found in the cabin. Also combining retro and modernity is the dual and tri-zone automatic air conditioning system that features rotary control knobs and digital display and illumination, as well as rear aircon ventilation on the center console and roof. Bold may not be the word that comes to mind when describing the Tucson interior. Elegant, minimalist, posh may be better. Also, roomy, as it can sit five adults comfortably in leather upholstered seats. The driver's seat on the GLS Plus power adjusts and features lumbar support. The driver's seat is well bolstered. The leather-covered steering wheel manually tilts and telescopes and comes with buttons and switches for the audio as well as cruise control. Hyundai describes the dash design concept as akin to a waterfall, everything falling smoothly down. The instrument cluster is displayed on what looks like a freestanding 10.25-inch tablet. Hyundai also attempts to integrate the infotainment display and automatic air conditioning display and controls into one smooth and clutter-free front console. Most controls done by touch on the display except for power and audio volume and tune file controls that use scroll wheels and the temperature mode controls which use toggle switches. The use of multi-air vents cools the cabin more evenly. The infotainment system in the CRV VX Turbo features a 9-inch touchscreen display with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Audio, Bluetooth, hands-free telephone and audio streaming, USB input, 8 speakers. The Tucson GLS is equipped with an 8-inch touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, customizable voice recognition, 6 speakers that include 2 tweeters, and Bluetooth. Driving the VX Turbo is a breeze. The DOHC DI VTEC turbocharged 4-cylinder 1498cc gasoline engine churns out 190 PS at 6000 RPM 
and 240 newton meters of torque that maxes out at 1700 to 5000 rpm. All that power and torque is set smoothly to all four wheels via a continuously variable transmission and real-time all-wheel drive system. The leather wrap 3-spoke steering wheel provides good and comfortable grip, and its tilt and telescopic function, combined with a power-adjusting seat, allows driver to easily get the perfect driving position. Hondas are known for providing electric power steering that balances ease and solid control. Steering is light at very low speeds, like when parking and progressively gets heavier at greater speeds for more stable handling. The steering wheel also comes with controls for such things as the audio system, the multi-information display, adaptive cruise control and voice assistant function. Helping make driving the CRV more pleasurable is a suspension using front McPherson struts and multi-link system at the rear that is soft enough to ride over bumps well yet firm enough for good stability rounding curves at speed. Adding to confidence in braking knows the CRV comes with 17-inch disc brakes on all four wheels, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. Hyundai brought in two Tucson variants, the GLS Plus powered by a SmartStream D2.0 1998cc diesel engine generating 186 PS at 416 Nm of torque and the GLS powered by a SmartStream G2.0 1999cc gasoline engine putting out 156 PS at 192 Nm of torque. The diesel engine is mated to an 8-speed shift-by-wire automatic transmission with the GLS Plus getting paddle shifters. The gasoline variant comes with a 6-speed automatic transmission. The Hyundai Tucson rides on a suspension featuring the now common front McPherson struts rear multi-link combo. With this, ride comfort and handling compares well against the competition in the compact SUV segment. The brake system gets 16-inch discs on all four wheels, ventilated in front which can compare better than well against the competition, some of which still use drums in the rear. All three variants of the 6th generation CRV available locally come with Honda Sensing, a suite of advanced driving and safety features. These include adaptive cruise control, low speed follow, collision mitigation braking system, lane keeping assist system, road departure mitigation, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, auto high beam, and lead car departure notification. Honda has also equipped the latest CRVs with much of the safety and driver assist features and tech now standard in top grade vehicles. CRVs come with a nearly full alphabet of safety systems that include ABS, EBD, VSA, HSA, ESS, AHA, HDC, and TPMS. Also standard in the Honda CRV are dual SRS airbags, side airbags, side curtain airbags, knee airbags. 3-point ELR seatbelts for 7, seatbelt reminders for front and second row occupants, child safety lock, child seat anchors, driver attention monitor, Honda Lane Watch. Anti-lock braking system and electronic stability control help keep driver in control, especially in inclement weather and slippery road conditions, or from mistakes from aggressive driving. Hyundai has also equipped the Tucson at least for local release, downhill brake control, hill start assist control, trailer stability assist, manual speed limiter, tire pressure monitoring system, and immobilizer. Parking is helped along by rear-view monitor with dynamic guidance in front and rear parking distance warning. Standard for safety are six airbags, child safety rear door locking, anchors for child seat, and electrochromic rear-view mirror. In this head-to-head, -head, the CRV has a longer list of features than the Tucson, but it's also significantly more expensive. The question now is which provides more value for money? Are you into grassroots racing? Slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing. Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. 
Fixed Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fixed Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash fixedstopautoservice. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. After much teasing from Mitsubishi, the Triton has arrived. This special feature shows us the exciting launch of the all-new Mitsubishi Triton. now implementing our all new Mitsubishi Triton launching event here in Manila and all business partners we launch officially uh, to the public. We developed this all new Triton from scratch, corrected so many customers voice, not only here in the Manila, Philippines and all over the world. So all of them all brand new, especially drivability, comfortableness, so you can enjoy that by through the test drive. They are so great. I hope you're going to enjoy it. That's right, uh, what I mentioned. As a comparing Strata, first of all, I would like to say myself and the Mitsubishi Morris try to get a bit more higher position, segment market share. Now we are number four to be a bunch more higher. With scratch, we are built up, and the chassis and powertrain, especially twin turbo, 4 and one six, and the engine, transmission, both are with control, everything. So by through that, I can say, very different from Strata, very old brand new. Mitsubishi would like to make Filipino customers ride better. So you can enjoy wherever, adventure, or a great urban life or you know uh, workforce so, so uh, daily business everything this great vehicle can cover uh, we try to compete with other big rival Red Rival, Toyota Hilux, and you know, Old Ranger, Nissan Navara, they are so great. But I'm very, very uh, confident to conquest their market share. And I would like to build up a bit more bigger sales of pickup. Pickup is a very perfect match to the Filipino riders. No problem, it's uh, some supply chain uh, from Thailand or any other model like an expander from Indonesia. Very, very noble. After pandemic bit, we could see that some difficulty, but now everything is so perfect. Mitsubishi models, uh, Philippines, Thai, Indonesia, headquarter, everything so clear. So no doubt, and we keep run, uh, supplying the, this model and the, any other model to Filipino market to get a higher position. Thank you very much. You are a great loyalty to our brand. So now we are going to launch new pickup, all new Triton. Hope you enjoy. Uh, this is a perfect model to your life, make it better. And then for Filipino and uh, right to appeal once again, we are going to launch new campaign, we, what we call Tara Red Pinas, to enjoy the great Philippines together with Mitsubishi Rhino. Let's enjoy car ride together. Thank you very much.
will the all-new Mitsubishi Triton be as sought after as its competitors? We have a feeling it will be popular to those who need an amazing pickup option for their off-road ventures. Zoom UX. Take the lead. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. An earlier edition of Car Review checked out the new Maxus D60 Elite, Maxus Philippines' entry into the tight seven seater compact SUV crossover market. This time, it's the turn of the Maxus D60 Pro the five-seater variant. Maxxis Philippines brought in the D60, a nominally compact SUV to compete price-wise in the subcompact segment now one of the hottest in the country in terms of vehicle sales. The D60 arrived in two variants, the Elite, a seven-seater that should fit nicely as a family vehicle and the Pro, a 5-seater SUV that should do well for those looking for a comfortable daily drive in the city and a competent weekend ride. The Maxxis D60 Pro, like the Elite, is 4,720mm long, 1,860mm wide, and 1,736mm tall with a 2,760mm wheelbase. It may be a little hard to tell the Pro from the Elite by looking from the outside. The 5-seater comes with a black radiator grille with silver highlights, as well as 17-inch alloy wheels and 215-65R17 tires, while the 7-seater features a distinctive cobweb grille design and 18-inch alloy rims with 235-55R18 tires. Like the Elite, the Pro comes with roof rails, daylight running lights, rear fog lamp, rear window defogger, but the auto headlights on the 5-seater comes in halogen instead of LED, and the side view mirrors power adjust but do not power fold. The Maxxis D60 Pro interior is not as feature-packed as the Elite, but it comes with enough of the comfort and convenient features to make it good value for money. The Pro is equipped with power windows, central door locking, manual air conditioning with rear air vents, a multifunction steering wheel, even cruise control, but not the keyless entry and push start that comes with the Elite. But both share the same infotainment system with 8-inch touchscreen display, USB and Bluetooth connectivity, and 6 speakers. The Pro features sporty fabric upholstery for the seats, the driver's seat manually adjusts six ways. The front passenger seat just slides and reclines, adjusts four ways. The second row seat for three splits, 60-40, slides and reclines and comes with center armrest. Underneath the hood of the Maxxis D60 is a 1,490cc four-cylinder turbocharged and intercooled gasoline engine with direct fuel injection that generates 169 PS at 5,500 revolutions per minute and 250 Nm of torque from 1,700 to 4,300 RPM. The engine powers the front wheels via a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that provides smooth gear changes. The D60 engine provides a good balance of performance and fuel efficiency that make it both fun and a practical ride. The multifunction steering wheel feels both light and responsive with electronic power steering. The suspension features McPherson struts in front and a multi-link system in the rear. The brake system comes with discs on all four wheels. They work to give the D60 a fairly comfortable and stable ride on city streets and country roads. Helping give confidence for a safe ride and drive, the D60 comes equipped with standard safety features and driver assist tech that include driver and front passenger airbags, side airbags, three-point seatbelts for five, and ISOFIX. A reverse camera plus rear parking sensors make it safer and easier to park the D60, especially in tight and crowded parking lots. The D60 Pro also comes with electronic parking brake with auto hold, electronic stabilization program, emergency brake assist plus hill hold control, tire pressure monitoring system, and immobilizer. There's not much that separates the Maxxis D60 1.5 Elite and Pro. Aside from the number of seats, there's a great expectation in the Maxxis camp that both will do well in a crowded market for SUVs and crossovers. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we're going to talk about the dreaded check engine light. 
what it is, what it means, and why you should not freak out. So you're driving normally, minding your own business, and then suddenly, BAM! The yellow light of death comes out, the dreaded check engine light. You start freaking out, don't know what to do. You start the car, you stop the car, you turn it on, and it's still there. Oh no, it's the end of the world, something's wrong with my car, my engine is busted. Relax, it's none of those things. Quite simply put, a check engine light simply means that one of the various sensors in the engine senses that something is wrong or is reading wrong. Almost all the sensors in the car measure voltage, is in electricity. It reads anywhere from 0 to 5 volts, and if that sensor is calibrated to read, say, only from 1.5 to 4 volts, then for some unknown reason, it becomes 4.1 volts, then the check engine light will come out. That's all it means. One of the sensors reads something wrong. Now, whether it reads something wrong because of a glitch or temporary condition, or because the sensor is failing, that you will have to find out. And no, you cannot find it out by going on Facebook. You cannot find out going on the internet asking, may check engine ako, ano yung problema? You ask 10 different people, you will get 100 different answers. And none of them will be correct. Especially the people say, oh, nagkaroon na po niyan. Ito yung problema niyan. No, they are wrong. Do not believe them. Because there are 999 possibilities why that light comes out. The only way for you to find out what that means is if you either, one, have a scanner like this, or you bring it to the casa or the dealership and you have a bigger scanner like this. So now we'll show you what happens when you actually do bring your car in for scanning. First we'll take the regular shop grade scanner that we have here. This reads pretty fast. All scanners will actually have this port. It's a trapezoidal port. It's called an OBD port or onboard diagnostic port. Every car has this port and it's always, always located somewhere here. It's standard that all car manufacturers agree to. So this will work for any car. This will tell you what the check engine means. There's always an error code with that starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. You can actually type that into Google and then it will pretty much tell you what it means. So for this Honda City, we actually have a check engine and we're gonna plug this in right now. So we have it plugged in. It's actually here on the corner. We turn the engine on. On, not start. And we wait for it to fire up because it was now going to talk to the engine ECU and pull out the error code and see what it means. This is what we mean by the error code. It starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. On our particular scanner, it actually tells you what component is the problem. So this one here is mass or volume airflow circuit low. It might be an intermittent lean condition, it might be an intermittent voltage condition, or it might be that your mass airflow sensor is over 10 years old and it's dead and it's dying. At least it narrows it down to any of the 999 possibilities because it could either be mass airflow sensor, misfire, crank sensor, ABS, oxygen sensor 1, oxygen sensor 2, fuel tank evaporator sensor. The list goes on and on and on. So without this, you won't be able to say for certainty what is wrong with the engine or actually what sensor and what component is wrong with the engine without this. The first thing that shops will do is, oh, that's it? Okay, we just hit the race. So we perform the scan test again. As you can see, the message says no powertrain trouble codes. There's no more. Nine out of ten times, this will work and check engine is gone. So we unplug the scanner and then that's it, you can go on your merry way. But the bigger question is, will that check engine light return? Possibly yes, like I said. It's caused by one of the sensors not reading correctly. So why it didn't read correctly, we can only speculate, but the two most common reasons are, one, external factors, it just, something just goes wrong. Electronics do that sometimes. Or it might be a symptom of that, that particular sensor is on its way to being dead. So it reads wrong now, it reads fine. In the future, it might read wrong again. If it gets too severe, and if you do the erase procedure and it does not erase, that means that the sensor is busted and it's time for replacement. Now, what causes check engine lights? Oftentimes, you'll read on the internet and the groups, masama langis mo. No, that doesn't work. Masama yung gasolina mo. Possibly, yes. Because there is such an engine code called cylinder misfire detected that was caused by bad batch of gas whether your 98 octane is not really 98 
or may tubig sa gasolina, you don't know. Can it be caused by faulty spark plugs? Yes, it can also. Can it be caused by me not using the car for three years? Possible, because that particular sensor could be busted and rusted. Particularly, let's say, crankshaft position sensors. These things have a magnet inside them. And the engine gets hot, it gets cold, gets hot, gets cold. The magnet eventually becomes less magnetic. That will also cause a check engine. So like I said, you cannot find out for certain without one of these things. Now, actually, if you go to Lazada, you just type OBD scanner, you will find a lot for 400 bucks, 700 bucks, 900 bucks. You can actually just buy one of those and it will work on your car. Just for you to be able to narrow it down. And if you do bring your car to the shop, Make sure that once you scan it, you take a picture of this, show it to the shop so they won't be punching in the dark and asking a lot of questions and basically guessing why. That will be a big help. And if the check engine light doesn't go away and then if there's something wrong, you only need one of these things. Professional level vehicle diagnostic scanner. This you cannot buy in Lazada anymore. <laughs>we hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. In honor of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, We Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.